What's up guys, this is Dan Giffen. This is Jerry, he's gonna help me make this tutorial today. Just wanted to let you know, I found an amazing workaround that I'm stoked to share with you guys. Uh, it's basically how to sample your hardware instrument super fast in Ableton Live. And you can have all of the sounds from your hardware in Ableton Live in a sampler instrument and you don't have to lug that thing around everywhere you go. You can just take your laptop any place and you have all the sounds inside Ableton in a sampler instrument and you can share it with whoever you want. So I'm gonna show you guys today how to sample your hardware instrument super fast with the help of CliffX Pro in Ableton Live. We're gonna sample this beautiful Moog Sub 37 behind me. This thing's sexy. I'm going to show you step by step how to set it up so you can quickly just hit one button, walk away, and it'll sample an entire preset on your hardware. So let's check it out. So step one is you're going to want to make sure that your hardware synth or hardware instrument can receive MIDI from Ableton Live. And then you're going to have audio coming out of your hardware into Ableton. If you don't know what CliffX is, it's basically a scripting language that lets you hack Ableton to do anything that Ableton doesn't already do on its own. So let's start from scratch. This is only like a one-time thing you have to do pretty much. You can just create a template and then save that Ableton project and do it for every other preset on any other hardware you want. First things first, you want to make sure that Ableton recognizes CliffX Pro. So it's got this red box that shows that CliffX is working. The way you're going to set that up after you install CliffX, uh, more in the description of this video, but uh, you want to set CliffX Pro as a control surface right here. Then you're going to want to make sure that um, the USB jack that you have hooked up to your hardware instrument, uh, Ableton recognizes that as a MIDI port, and you're going to want to turn on track for the output. Mine is the Moog Sub 37, you can see it shows up there. So make sure track is on for the output under the MIDI port section in Ableton's preferences link MIDI tab. What we're going to do is create a bunch of dummy MIDI clips and this is just to have a command so that uh, CliffX will be able to automatically jump to every new scene and capture a new note out of your hardware instrument and you only have to hit one button it'll do everything for you and this is the most important part so we're going to rename these uh, clips to this CliffX Pro command which is going to be in the uh, description of this video so you can just copy and paste that throw that into here and then you're just going to duplicate this like six billion times and just let that go on and on and on and on and on and on forever so you might be wondering dan what does all that weird gibberish cliffx code mean basically what this cliffx pro command is saying is the three is representing track three and because this track is armed that clip slot is going to start recording and then it's going to record for four measures so that's what the record fix means and Basically, it'll just start recording and then it's going to launch the next scene. So it's just going to automate that process, capturing every note, recording every note and go on. More on that in a second. So then basically you're going to want to get an external instrument, go to the instruments folder, drag and drop a external instrument. I'm going to set the MIDI to the sub 37, which is connected. And then I have that sub 37 routed through my interface. <laughs> So now uh, what I want to do is I need to be able to create a MIDI clip that represents every note that I want to sample from this Moog back here. And you might be wondering, Dan, why don't you just sample one note from the Moog and then throw it into a sampler and then you can play every note you ever want out of that one note. Problem is, if you just sample one note and then you try to play it at a higher or lower octave, it's going to take that piece of audio for that one note that you sampled. It's going to stretch it really hard and it's going to sound like crap. And we don't want that to happen. So what we have to do is sample every single note. So then when we play back those notes, it's going to be like a clean representation of like the true tone of that instrument. And that's why we need CliffX Pro to make this process super fast for us. Otherwise, you'd have to like play every single note and it would take forever. There's a good Mr. Bill video on how to do this, but you have to use use like your virtual MIDI in and outputs and mapping and I just find CliffX Pro with this method is a lot easier and faster. Depending on the preset or the instrument that you're sampling, I typically find doing four to five octaves of sampling every single note is pretty typical and standard. So I'm going to do four octaves for now for this preset of this Moog and we have to create a note and each one of these clip slots for this external instrument track is going to be an individual note. So one of the fastest ways to do that is to go into arrangement view. I want each note to be four measures long. 
So let's do four bars. And then um, if you just double click, it should create a new blank mini clip. And then uh, I'll just basically turn off loop. If I go down, let's do C1. So if I choose C1, I can stretch that out for four bars. And then what I can do is just duplicate this 12 times. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right, there's twelve in an octave. So then what I would do is I would just uh, consolidate all these clips, hold down shift, highlight all the clips, and then if you hit command J, shortcuts are our friends, and or you could right click and choose consolidate. But uh, I'm gonna do this and then I'll just highlight the next note and hit the arrow key on my computer keyboard and I'll shift up one. If you hold down option and then you hit up or down on your computer arrows you can jump to the next one real fast and then I just use that arrow when I let go of option and I can just have it jump and you really only have to do this once because after you do it once then uh, you'll basically have a template for later on um, that you can just basically duplicate that Ableton project that I'm showing you how to make now up front it'll take a second and then after this it's super easy and boom alright the next note would be C right yeah, so that's this is one octave. So then you'll hit Command D, which will duplicate or right click. You can do that too. Shortcuts are our friends. And then I will uh, basically click in the clip. Command A will highlight all the notes. And then I'll hold down Shift and then arrow up. If you hold down Shift arrow up, that'll raise everything an octave. And then now I've got one octave beautifully going into the next. And then I can just duplicate this. Same thing. Highlight all. Shift them up. Duplicate it again and then highlight all these shift octave up and that gives me four octaves that's good enough for now next thing you want to do is you want to um, split all these clips because we want all these notes to be individual so I'll just hold down command E and you can just click and split each one of these clicking in the background grid and just chop these guys up really fast so once you have all that done all you have to do is click highlight all of them copy and then paste it over here go to the very top cell up here on your external instrument track paste it boom you got all your notes and then yeah you'll want to make sure that you have enough of these in there to cover all these notes in the scenes yeah so basically what we've got here is a note sampled across four octaves next thing we want to do is we want to set the input of that moog which i think is channel four so when i play one of these notes and I arm this track, then that note is going to be played in this track for us. So notice how both are being played. So I'll turn off this track, uh, deactivate this track. So now we don't hear this track, we're only hearing this track. So if I change monitor to auto, then I can actually hear this. Beautiful, right? So the next thing you want to do is you turn off your global quantization because notice how it took a second because Ableton was waiting for the next bar um, every measure when I launched the next clip. So it makes it faster if you just turn that off when we launch this. Basically now uh, when one of these clips are launched we want it to record audio right because this is just MIDI. So we want to capture the actual note across all four octaves and CliffX helps us do that automatically. So if I launch this scene then it's going to launch CliffX. CliffX is going to uh, start recording this clip automatically for us and record audio and it's going to go all the way down and track every single note across four octaves for us automatically. Super easy, right? It's going to be really great. So let's test it out and see what happens. So you get the idea, right? It just keeps sampling it. You can go have a cup of coffee, go to the grocery store, whatever you need to do. It's gonna sample all those notes for you really fast. It's beautiful, right? Okay, the next thing you wanna do is once you have all these notes, let's just pretend that all these are already sampled and taken down. Uh, the next thing you wanna do is create a sampler instrument because we gotta drop all these notes into a sampler so we can play them back really easy with a MIDI controller, with your computer keyboard, take it to a coffee shop, wherever you want. You don't have to haul this thing around now that you've got all the notes taken out of this preset of that hardware instrument. So let's go into here, let's drag a sampler and you're gonna to wanna to open up the zones and then what you're going to do is you're going to copy all of these clips that have been sampled and then I'm going to highlight all of these individual notes, all 12 of these, drop them into there and then I want to set the zone to start to finish 
based on where these notes start and finish. So um, I know I started at C1, um, but realistically, I probably, if I was doing this all over again, I would start literally from like C minus two or C minus one, however high or low the range of that instrument is playing back, which sounds good. Um, so, and then I only, for the sake of time, just did one octave. So let's just uh, set the ranges there. So it's just a full octave of C1. And then I'll right click over here with all these highlighted and choose distribute ranges equally. When I do that, now when you play back the notes on a keyboard, it's going to literally play back all those notes in the sampler as they are actually on a keyboard to the right root note. So if I was to do that, then it would sound something like this. Yep. And there you go. And then all you have to do is literally just save this um, inside of your folder in your user library or whatever. Call this Moog Sub 37 Preset. Now you can open up a new Ableton Live project. Just drop that in there. And now you can put those notes back as you normally would. And there you go. That's how you can really quickly sample any preset of your synth or hardware instrument. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. Uh, I would love to connect with you. If you go to liveproducersonline.com slash newsletter, you can join the newsletter and you'll get updates with webinars, with Ableton certified trainers, um, all kinds of new stuff and video tutorials like this. Also, uh, join the membership. There's a free plan. You'll be part of the private Facebook group, and then you can ask questions and interact with other Ableton producers and artists and stay updated with future comings of things. So, yeah, check it out, liveproducersonline.com. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Enjoy, and I'll see you next time.